varias? Someone else might tell you, by doing that, you're living in legalism. Now, I've had people. I've, I've, I've had people tell me that I was wrong to be wearing the kippah and the tzitzit without knowing that God specifically told me to wear those. And so, uh, you know. And then those people that told you that were Jewish. So one of the things that, that the Lord lets us know in those kind of things is, is Michael is a pain of <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, causes a, well, the Jewish term would be pain in the tukas, yeah. <laughs> Basically, a the thorn. a thorn in the yeah. yeah. But wouldn't it be a witness? I mean, they're supposed to say, "Why are you doing that?" And then he has a chance to talk to. Them. And then, see, and that with these, with our Jewish brothers, that's exactly what happens. Because, yes, they have accepted the Lord, and they are leading congregations, and they are running into those that possibly are wearing the kippah and the tzitzit just because they want to look a certain way. So Michael ends up looking like those that have made that choice for the wrong motive. And so when they... When they, with their past history of dealing with those with the wrong motive, confront Michael, Michael who they know has a relationship with God, who, because, because this little congregation still exists, is a testimony to God, all right? And all these, all these congregational leaders know that, because to have a little congregation that's now, after its eighth, it's, it's in its ninth year, eighth year, we're in our ninth year. They, they, that stands, does Michael Wallace hear from God? Yes. Is that something that's commonly happening with a lot of people? Not as much. Okay, so if God told Michael to do that, possibly I'm misjudging some of these others over here. You know, so I, well, I'm not, now that's me putting my understanding in there. I don't know why God did it. I just know, and, and, and I was the first one that it caused the pain, <laughs> because I was like, well, you might as well just draw a, a, a target on the back of your head and say, shoot me, you know, well, I, it was, that it, was a long time it ago. It causes pain in not just the Jewish community, it causes pain in, uh, it it's causes consternation in those who are in churches, it causes consternation in just the regular man who's walking down the street, especially in the U.S., because they don't understand what he's wearing on his head. Or who he is. Yeah. And we get looks like yeah. crazy yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So. Yeah. He goes on an airplane, he gets, he gets patted in. I did not get to do that. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. But we don't know what's in that person's head. But we're really bad to judge. But. There's always that but. The thing is, it's a balance. Yeah, okay. But it's that balance. We can't judge the person, but we can judge the fruit. So. It's it's both ways. You can't right. either way go. Well, we can't judge anybody, I'm and just we yeah. Can't judge by their just by their appearance. Oh, well. Just by looking at them and going immediately oh, without yeah. knowing anything about them, going that person is. Evil. But what about the lewd, the lewd clothing? The lewd clothing. There's some fruit that's hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. That's <what> <laughs> Very good, poet. Uh huh. It's balance. If a if a if a woman is wearing blue clothing, yeah. 
Then you're judging by their appearance. Or a man is wearing blue clothes. Because their appearance is the fruit. But the thing is, is you can come close, and especially in a young girl's, uh, in the case of a young girl, you can at least begin through relationship. Sometimes it is a, it is ignorance. Sometimes, like I, I can, I, I, I know of some that have been raised literally on the street, and if that's all that they know, they, that's the only value they know is that is that they can attract attention, get fed through their physical attributes. And so therefore, is it possible for God to redeem an individual like that and some of those habits still be intact? And I say affirm yes. And it's a process of redemption of the behaviors and the appearance. Uh, now, if 20 years after that person accepts the Lord, they're still doing that, then there's a problem. The tattooing is the same way, actually. There's a lot of people, young people I've met, that it's 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 ignorance. It's that they actually believe that by tattooing their body with a religious symbol that they are witnessing. I actually have a very close friend that he was showing me he has two crosses, one cross right there and another cross right there. And I was like, dude, you know that tattooing is wrong, right? And he's a relatively new believer compared to, especially compared to the people in this room. And he's like, no, I never heard that. I said, yeah, it says in there that you're not supposed to tattoo your body. And he was like, well, I was doing this as a witness to him, but I'll have to study that. Okay, I, I don't know, because I, and the way he put it was because I, my parents, they don't, you know, they don't teach me anything, and I haven't read the whole thing yet, so I'm still. Still reading, so. Concept in time, though. Well, you didn't get your Bible and look and read this. Yeah, because it's 
says, you are my son today. Today, I have become, I have become your father. father. Today is a concept of time. It's a declaration. You know, we, we just went through this redemption of the firstborn. We just went through uh, learning about the significance of, okay, number one, that, that the firstborn sons were killed in, in Egypt. Okay, and then and that was how, that was the, the straw that kind of broke the camel's back, and, and that was when. Egyptians let people go, right? And then you have the priesthood where God's saying, all your firstborn males are mine. And then you redeem that, that firstborn male. So if you, if you draw a correlation to firstborn male, then God's choice to send a part of himself, okay, the word, Word became flesh, and at that point, according to Scripture, Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. At that point, that ends up being a firstborn son. That carries through the significance of all, a lot of the things that we've been studying about about the significance of the firstborn son. It brings it into flesh. It brings it into. Um, because he, he had required people to give their firstborn sons, and then he gives his firstborn son. Yes, his firstborn son ends up being dedicated. Uh, this says that it is a... This passage is actually a quote from Psalm chapter 2. Verse 7. Which says, I will proclaim the decree. Yahweh said to me, You are my son. Today I became your father. And if you go on, it says, Ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance. The whole wide world will be your possession. You will break them with an iron rod, shatter them like a clay pot. This is very clearly a messianic psalm. This is a, a messianic prophecy in the psalms written by David. Okay. For the wording to be, both in Hebrew and in Greek, Day I have become your father suggests that prior to a certain point in time he was not his father. To become something means that at one point you weren't and then you became that. Okay. So at the point, and I'm just giving you my opinion, at the point like Debbie was saying, the point that the Holy Spirit came upon Miriam and she conceived a son, that it was that at that point that he actually became a son and Yahweh, the Father, became his father. So prior to that, you would have the Ruach HaKadosh, what we would classify as the Father, but say Almighty or, or give a different name, one of the many names. It's, it's the thing is the all the image. Yeah. The, the, the any time that you start getting into trying to discuss the concept of the Godhead and how the distinctives of the Godhead relate to one another, and I call them distinctives because to me, that's the best terminology to use. Um, it becomes a very um, complex and confusing topic. And there are 
different religious groups that claim that they know absolutely the truth about how the Godhead functions and how the distinctives relate to one another. And, and you've got one religious group who say they know how it is and they tell you what they believe and then you've got another group that say they know how it is and they tell you something different. And so the very fact that you've got multiple groups saying different things means nobody knows. <laughs> and, yes? Okay. Because we know the God is one. And this is kind of, this is kind of the way that I thought about it. God is in God. He is at God. He is one. But don't we, and this is kind of a question, kind of an idea of mine that I carry, is do we have an example in Scripture? Because Adam was one, right? And then God took a part of Adam and created another. So if God is one, then I think I would be thinking more along the lines of what you were just saying that, that he took of himself and imparted that to human time. You know, and, and, and here you can see that would be almost like a similar event to that. You, know, okay, you have to make a distinction, though, in Hebrew between Echad mm -hmm. and Yahid. Uh oh. <laughs> Since I don't know that word, I'm sure I'm trying. Echad is the concept of a singular plurality, a unity. Yahid, on the other hand, means singular only, one. So when you're talking about uh, Adam, Adam started out as Yahid. Okay? I'm the singular only one. Singular only one. Okay. And out of out of Adam Adam's Yahid, God made Chava and brought them back together and said, You will be Echad. Not Yahid, but Echad. Which means a plural unity. Unity. Okay? And whenever it talks about God. It talks about it does never it never uses the term in relation to God Yahid. It so, uses the term Echad. So there was a pre-existing, even though we're talking of, because of this scripture, we're talking about a point where it be where it says right there, You are my son, today I have become your father. Even though there is a point from this verse that's stated, nonetheless there was a a plural unity that pre-existed this becoming. Okay? There was a... There was, yeah, how would you... How do you sign that? <laughs> we, we, as, we assign and God... We assign and God has assigned certain linguistic terms to these concepts to try to help us understand and get a handle on them in some way. But our language, as we know, is limited. And there, there are concepts and, and things, aspects of His existence we do not comprehend, we do not understand. There is no language that can give it proper definition and understanding. So we're limited. We're limited in our understanding in large part by our language, by our ability to describe uh, what we're talking about. Well, the scripture tells us that we are made in God's image. Yes. And we are body, soul, Yes. So there's three. Yes. So in in me there's three, in you there's three. Yes. But yet we're one. Yes. And there's there's no way we don't have any way of taking a human being and extracting 
the three parts that make up the human being and looking at each one of them individually. I can't extract somebody's spirit out of them and look at their spirit or their, extract their soul out of them and look at their soul. We know that those three parts comprise the whole. We know that. But we, there's no way for us to look at all three of them separately and distinctly. They, they comprise one single being. <laughs> that was very enthusiastic. Uh, but he, I mean, that, that is a good example, but even that's kind of lacking because, yes, yes. because you don't hear about our spirit talking to another spirit saying, well, only the body knows. Or the body saying, another body, only the spirit knows. So there is, there is more of a separation, but at the same time I would say probably there is more of a connection than there is in our, in our existence. Yeshua is both equal and not equal 
with God the Father is, is something that we cannot wrap our, mat, our heads around. And um, I was going to say minds. Um, we, can't, we can't wrap our mind around that being the truth. And yet, there are scriptures that talk about His equality with the Father. There are other scriptures that talk about His subjection, His submission, His subservience to the Father. So, uh, and, and there's, you know, when you start talking about the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you have all of these uh, dialectical pairs, these paradoxes going on in the scripture. That's why I say, as a human being, you cannot know perfectly and exactly how those distinctives of the Godhead function and relate to one another. You can't. There are some, some aspects of it that we can't understand. There are other aspects that we will not understand until we're with Him. And even then, I'm wondering if we'll fully understand <laughs> Um, but but that is, that's kind of a bunny trail off of the off the original question that people ask. Somebody else have something to say or ask or such a way as to he, he knows what each individual needs to see and experience. With Moshe, he was a flame in a bush that didn't, didn't consume the bush. And a voice comes out of the bush. Now, I'm not sure how many people would have responded in the same way Moshe did to that phenomenon. Not everybody would have responded the same way. And uh, so God knew how Moshe needed to experience him that first time. And, and so repeatedly throughout the scripture, you see Yahweh appearing in a lot of different forms uh, to people. And uh, so it's an yeah, interesting thought. Excuse me. Um, Okay, God is described as uh, His kingdom is the kingdom of light. First of all, I mean, light in and of itself is associated with God, right? Yes. Light is one. When you take God and you start talking about these different aspects, it's like light. He, when He needs to, He refracts Himself. When you refract light, you see the rainbow. You see different colors, individual colors, but they're also inseparable. You can't take red away from yellow or green or all the rest. It's it's all connected, but it's definitely green, yellow, red, violet. It's all the different things, but it, it's still one piece. So when God God views it necessary, he refracts himself. So he is like light. And that's very much I would think of course probably the way it goes is he built light as an image of himself, not vice versa. <laughs>
6. I gotta watch. <laughs> Oh. Thank you. If, oh, yeah. if you have any more, <laughs> if you have any more questions, if you think of any more questions, make sure that you write them down and stick them in the bowl. I'll have to get some more paper up here. And there's a couple pieces of paper there. Okay. We we really. <clears throat> really enjoy doing this. You know, there, there are things that um, are discovered and that we think about and we talk about and gain understanding of uh, only by doing this kind of exercise. It, it, it can't be, um, you're, you're not going to get everything that you need by me just standing up there and, and preaching your message. And so um, that's why we like to do this every once in a while. I, I really enjoy these times. I get a whole lot out of being able to discuss these things. Now, there's some folks in the room don't ever say anything. Your, what you have to say is just as much a part of this as anyone else. And so I encourage you to ask questions, to make comments, and uh, please don't feel like you're not smart enough or uh, that people would think that your questions are dumb or A lot of times uh, things are not understood because nobody asks the question. So the point of this is to not just fill our heads with knowledge, but to give us an understanding that will allow us to better be able to live our life and serve our God. All have something to contribute. All right. Anything else before we actually close? What? All right. Well, I already did the uh, your talk by Colleen. Just, oh. I believe this came from Carla. She had to leave. And this is actually not a question for for us who are just wanting a calendar. Abba, thank you for this day of worship. Lord, uh, in Christian circles, they have reduced worship down to just singing praise songs. And Lord, uh, the Hebrew concept of worship is much, much broader. It, the word contains the concept of service, of work, of study, uh, and 
yes, it does include the declarations of our mountain. But, uh, but worship is all of these things. And so, Father, even as we have discussed these questions and looked at the Scripture, we have been engaged in worship of you. So, Father, we thank you for this time of worship together before your throne. We bless your name. We ask that as we leave this place, that your blessing will reside on us and our families. And Father, if there's anything in us that would block that blessing, I pray that you would show it to us so that we can remove it out of the way so that you can grant to us those things which you have wa always wanted to grant to us for the purpose of, of deepening our relationship with you and expanding your kingdom in the earth. In Yeshua's name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Salvation, the Prince of Peace. Amen.